Hi YouTube and welcome back to my channel. I'm Kelsey and this is Real with Mrs. B. Today I'm actually going to talk about our apartment fire and the results of that. And I know it's not a very fun topic, but um, I just want to let you know a little bit more about me. And I've mentioned it a few times in my videos because it's affected our financials, of course, and our moving situation where we live and everything. So I just want to preface by saying that John and I are incredibly lucky. Um, it could have been, the situation could have been much, much worse. And I'm just incredibly grateful for what we do have. And I'm really truly sorry for those who have gone through uh, a fire before or some other disaster that results in losing personal valuables. And today I'm just sharing this story, just put it out there and you get to learn a little bit more about me and our situation. And then to show that despite the hardships that we do have, that it's very important to continue to stay positive. We've also learned, unfortunately, the hard way, how important renter's insurance is. And uh, my message today is just to always be prepared. And when bad things do happen, to think about the positive and keep moving forward. So on March 22nd of this year, I was at my second job at the time with the kids. And um, it was about 5.30. And... I felt my phone ringing in my pocket and I never answer my phone at work because I'm at work and no one should be calling me and um, it kept ringing though so um, I was talking to a parent at the time and I said can you just hang on this is weird that my husband's calling me over and over and I noticed I had a few missed calls and I answered and he told me that um, our apartment was on fire and the first thing I asked was um, are the cats out? And he told me no. And right away I was in tears. And um, luckily the parent um, that was with me at the time, she's like, you know, I will help out. Like you need to get out. And um, luckily my last child was getting picked up at the time and I rushed out of there. And it was the longest 10 minute ride home Ever. Like I called my best friend and to this day she tells me that she has no idea what I even said on the phone, but I was just rambling and just in hysterics trying to get home. And um, when I got home, um, there was fire trucks obviously and um, a ton of people around and the way that our building is set up is um, it's really big so there's multiple sections of it and somehow I was able to run past everyone and I went to our balcony and on our balcony I was hoping that um, like our patio door or one of the windows or something would be left unlocked that I could just open it and our cats could run out I know it sounds silly but I was literally in hysterics and unfortunately they weren't and I was just saying how much I wanted to just break the window and all and my husband was by a police officer at the time who he let the police officer know that I was by the patio and the police officer told me I had to leave and um, I was just begging him to you know get my cats out or break the window or something he wouldn't and it was completely smoky in our apartment and I was freaking out that there was no way that they had made it. So uh, they started putting up the caution tape and we were just waiting and waiting and waiting. And the firefighters went by us and I kept asking them like, you know, our apartment is right there. Can you just go in and we have two cats, please? And they said they couldn't do it right now. We can't. And then in a little while, they, they finally asked us what apartment it is. And they went in and it felt like the longest time. And um, I thought for sure they were trying to figure out a way to tell me that they didn't survive, you know. And they came out and they were actually holding our cat carrier and they had both of our cats. They were, you know, pointing to me saying that they have two, they have two. And that is the best news I have could have gotten. And that is the number one reason I am so grateful to this day for those firefighters by just going in there and doing what they did. And we are so incredibly lucky. So 
That is what happened that day. But now crazy circumstances. Now, John and I love going to the movies, and we actually had tickets to go to a movie that night. And um, so since I worked till 6, the movie was at like 7. Um, so I told my husband, why don't you get some pizza um, and then throw it in the oven at 5.30, and then it'll be ready by the time, or go get it at 5.30 and then put it in the oven, and it'll be ready when I get home. Well, he actually got the pizza earlier that day, and um, around 5.30 is when he was, you know, starting to think about putting the pizza in the oven, or at least turning the oven on, and um, he has those, like, noise-canceling headphones to play games with, and he took them off, and he heard fire alarms going off, and he actually texted me. I have the text right here at 5.28. So there are multiple fire alarms going off and it smells like smoke. So I don't think that it's best to make a pizza. Of course, I didn't see this at first. But six minutes later, he sent me a picture, this picture actually, of the outside of our building. Now, our apartment is directly behind the flames in that picture. And then he sent me the text, are you coming home? And then that is when he called me. So, it looks awful from the picture, and it truly is. We are very fortunate that actually no one got hurt and everyone got out. And one of the reasons why is because the fire department is actually right next door to our apartment building. And I can't even imagine if they were further away because this ended up being, I think it was like a four alarm or five alarm um, fire. And... Uh, if the winds were going the other way or if they were further away. I mean, look at how big this is with the fire department next door. And because the winds were going the way they were, our apartment didn't get the actual fire damage. We got really, really bad smoke damage and, um, of course, water damage as well and heat damage. So we are incredibly grateful for that and, of course, getting our cats out. So um, immediately when we got our cats, you know, I wanted to get them to safety because they're like squished in one of these cat carriers and they reek like a fire. And um, so we gave our information, said we're okay, like gave it to the manager and said that we were going to my mom's. We ended up getting, you know, a litter box and food and, and everything for our cats and, um, you know, stuff to clean them with and went straight to my mom's. And... Uh, we didn't hear anything else that night. We were watching the news and stuff. We didn't know the state of anything. Um, the next day, obviously we, we had called in to work and um, we just waited. I think it was not until like 1.30 in the afternoon when we finally got a call that said, um, our place is unlivable and we have to move. Now we didn't think that it was that bad at the time. Um, we didn't expect that we'd have to move. We didn't really know how bad it was. And uh, we were told we could come into the apartment just for a few minutes to grab some stuff. And then um, they'd be showing us a couple other apartments. So we quickly went over there and um, got into our apartment. And <laughs> the smell is something I will never forget. It's undistinguishable. Like I used to love the smell of like a bonfire and uh, not so much anymore. But we were only able to grab like, I grabbed my laptop and um, our fireproof safe and um, some clothes and that's pretty much all that we could grab in the time that we had. And then we were shown a couple other apartments and we had to basically choose that day. We did end up choosing an apartment, um, not nearly as nice as the one that we had, but we were just grateful to have, you know, a roof over our heads. So uh, we were told the next day that we, it would be good, we could get the keys and move forward. And we get a call the next morning that says that apartment was already rented to someone else and we have to pick a different one. So we ended up getting another one in the same building, um, not quite as nice again, but at least it's on the first floor and it made it really, really easy to move, thankfully, because we'll be moving shortly again. So we spent um, that day 
uh, getting more stuff from our apartment and uh, we stayed at my mom's for I think like five nights. We went to the laundromat and did 32 loads of laundry. We went to the store many, many times to get supplies. And um, we spent the next like week and a half slowly moving everything out into our new place and cleaning, of course. Now this is how we spent uh, my spring break. <laughs> And uh, it was definitely no fun, but um, I just want to share a little bit about that and then I want to actually give some tips and things to know if you are ever in this situation or someone you know. So again, we were very lucky that we did not have actual fire damage, but we had smoke, heat, and water damage. So. If you are ever in this situation, there are a few things you should know about how to clean things and what you can and cannot keep. And I really wish that I actually knew this stuff ahead of time because, um, I mean, luckily we have data on our phones and Wi-Fi and stuff because we spend so much time looking up answers and um, our various questions and what we can keep and not or how to clean certain items and we wasted so much time doing that. It would be just so much nicer if someone would tell you um, or you you know what to expect in a situation like this. So number one is have renter's insurance. Now, very unfortunately for us, my husband and I did not have renter's insurance at the time. This was actually not our first apartment fire that we um, had. The very first apartment that we lived in together, it was Christmas Day, and a friend of mine called me and asked me why there are fire trucks outside of our apartment building. And I was like, I don't know. So I called our manager and she said, yeah, there was a fire um, on your floor. So we drove over there because one of my cats was in there and uh, the power was out and everything and they let us go up um, to get my cat out. And fortunately, again, it was three doors down from us and it was very well contained. Someone had left um, their heating lamp for a snake on while they went away uh, for college for Christmas break, which they weren't even supposed to have a snake in the first place or a heating lamp. Um, and it caught on fire. So it was very unfortunate. But anyway, my point is you never think it's going to happen. And that's why we get things like renter's insurance and auto insurance and health insurance just for those what if circumstances. And uh, we were in between two uh, um, auto insurance companies too and stuff. And we just didn't switch over our renter's insurance. And it was a huge mistake because it would have saved us a ton of money. Luckily we didn't lose everything that we could salvage things and we got a lot of help from other people which I will talk about at the end but renter's insurance that ten dollars a month or whatever it is is going to save you a ton of stress and money if you ever have an emergency. So renter's insurance is number one. And then next, I had a complete full pantry of, of food, of course, and uh, our fridge and everything. And I wanted to keep that stuff so bad, all of our stockpile of canned goods and all of that. And uh, we came to find out that you cannot keep a single thing of food like no cans nothing in the fridge or freezer anything like you have to throw everything away and the reason why is because heat damage can actually cook the stuff in cans and it can become toxic also the smoke can seep through the seams like on the side of the refrigerator and can contaminate your food so that was probably the most devastating to have to throw all of our food away and start over but you don't take a chance with something like that. Next, the biggest thing is um, getting the smell of smoke out of your clothes. We threw out a ton of clothes, which my husband was glad that I did condense my closet, but I was not. But the stuff that we did keep, um, it was very difficult to get the smell out. We went to a laundromat, which you should do. Go to a laundromat, don't use a family or friends 
um, uh, laundry just because you don't want to get that soot and stuff in, in the, you know, in the washer. And if you go to the laundromat, they have those ginormous uh, washing machines that fit like six loads. And then sometimes they have like these dryers that have like 10 loads worth that you can throw in there. So it's going to save you a lot of time to do all of your laundry at once. But we also did not have like the greatest laundry detergent or know how to do it, how bad the smell was going to be that we would have to wash our clothes multiple times and that got pretty costly. So tip number one with washing your clothes is get vinegar and a uh, spray bottle from the dollar store and spray down all of your clothes with white vinegar. And you throw it in the washer and then you can even put more white vinegar in the pre-wash at the top. And then um, using arm and hammer detergent was the savior for our clothes. Next, you have to throw away all of your plastic cookware. So all the Tupperware containers and um, you know the plastic spoons that you may have um, all of that has to be thrown away that was another very unfortunate thing next number four uh, buy degreaser and rags from the dollar store they have this amazing degreaser for one dollar that's called uh, totally awesome and it is totally awesome it gets the soot out of everything and it's so easy to use and it's cheap and then just grab the rags from there as well to help you clean and then you can rinse those out too and of course uh, Dawn soap and hot water does wonders as well another thing we tried is TSP and that you just dissolve in hot water and that will help as well so that's what we did we put it in our tub and then soaked like a bunch of containers in there that were soot covered and then next tip is to air it out so something like clothes for example you could put in trash bags and then put it outside if it's not you know raining or the middle of winter but <laughs> Put it outside and air it out. It's going to help with the smell a little bit. And then also when you move these items now, you won't have time probably to clean everything before you move it. That we uh, put plastic wrap down, you know, those plastic sh sheets you can get uh, and put it on the carpet. We put all of our containers in one room. Now the smell in there is just awful and I actually think that it's seeping through and affecting my breathing still to this day because we have not been able to clean everything yet and it's still like coming out of things that I I feel it in my throat sometimes that I cannot breathe all the way so having an air purifier windows open things like that is really going to help out lastly Make sure before you go to the store to write down exactly what you need. John and I went to the store so many times and it seemed like every time we didn't get everything that we needed, we forgot things, we'd have to go back because we didn't have our research, we didn't know what we exactly needed. So make sure to be prepared to write down everything and then go to the store so you're not wandering around aimlessly hoping that you grab everything that you need. Hopefully nothing like this ever happens to you or anyone that you know. It is not a fun experience. Um, like I said, we are still cleaning things. I, we've been crazy busy. And it seems, like I said, to be seeping out of things. We have a wood table that we kept. And um, I washed this thing like 10 times and black was still like coming out of it. We did have to throw away things like um, our mattress and our couch, lots of our clothes, um, obviously everything, our food and everything I talked about as well. But again, I am incredibly grateful for having our two cats every day. I give them so much love because I can't imagine what they went through during that hour that they were left into our, in our apartment. Um, I'm just so happy to have that and that we didn't, you know, none of our really, really expensive stuff 
um, you know, or things that we can't replace. They were not damaged completely that we had to throw them out. There was uh, four apartments that um, were completely fire damage. And then another 12 that had some form of heat and smoke damage. So in all, 16 apartments had to move. And we're very lucky that at the end of this month, it looks like our apartment will be ready to move back into. And they replace all of our countertops and carpet and um, appliances, pretty much everything. We are so excited to move back because that is our favorite place that we've ever lived and um, everything will be brand new. Um, obviously the fear of fire is still there and I'm always afraid of leaving the house for too long. Um, but it's something that obviously I'm going get, to get over. And now that we have renter's insurance, I can feel a little at ease about something going to happen. But lastly, before I go, I would like to thank the many people who have helped John and I out in this terrible situation. Number one is my mom. She helped us move. She helped us clean. She, she kept my cats there um, uh, like five days or seven days or whatever until we finally moved them into our apartment and kept us there, made us dinner. Like she is incredible and I'm so grateful to have her. Next, um, we had several people who helped us move, including um, some coworkers and my sister-in-law's fiance, my mom, um, a friend of mine, Michelle, amazing people that helped out. And uh, we also had a towing company guy who let our manager know that if there was someone in need of something to give him a call. So I gave him a call and said that, you know, we had to throw out all of our food. And he actually went grocery shopping with us and gave us a bunch of like essentials, which is just so kind to know that there are people out there that care about other human beings, you know. Next, when we were at the laundromat, there was a lady who saw the outrageous amount of laundry we were doing, and we got to talking, and she came over to me and gave me some money in my hand and told me, you know, to take it, and, um, you know, I didn't want to accept it. I mean, she, she didn't have to do that, but she's like, no, no, you take it, please, you know, I want to help. And it ended up being $50, like, from a random stranger. Like, how amazing is that? So other people, um, we had, let's see, my friends Lisa and Jason helped us move our um, a bed from my mother's-in-laws and a couch. Uh, some co-workers helped with a couch from my mother-in-laws that were just borrowing those for now to help us out. My sister-in-law helped out with getting um, more, you know, rubber maids and tape and stuff that she had extra of, um, an air purifier just to help us out. And then um, my husband's grandparents were very gracious as well in helping us financially. We did have co-workers that also pitched in and raised money for us, uh, which is just beyond amazing too, that we didn't, we wouldn't have had to have that happen if we had renter's insurance. So obviously we have renter's insurance now and we will always have that. And lastly, but definitely the most important, are those firefighters that were there. They were so kind in getting our cats out, and um, the fact that they went through and actually found our cat carrier, like they rummaged, you could tell they rummaged through everything and found the cat carrier and then um, grabbed both of our cats. And just being there and getting the fire under control, I mean, what they do every day is just phenomenal and uh, just this experience has just shown me what wonderful people there are out there and who truly actually care about us and hopefully I didn't forget anyone uh, again um, I just wanted to share my story and give a couple tips for those who are in a similar situation and hopefully this never happens to any of you um, Thank you for listening to my story, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask me, 
and I will see you in my next video.